Welcome to Orion Philosophy, where we explore, discuss and dissect areas of practical philosophy for use in everyday life. Today we are going through Seneca on the shortness of life, a small book written by Seneca, um, one of the three main Stoics from the ancient world, and we're going to go through a short passage on vice. And um, this really ties into the Stoic principle that a virtue is the only good. The virtues that are often cited as the four cardinal virtues, which are wisdom, uh, courage, justice, and temperance. Temperance being um, also known as discipline or self-control. And this is the opposite of that. This is vice, which is what the Stoics considered the only evil. Um, so virtue is the only good, vice is the only evil. Everything else like money, uh, wealth, status, um, reputation is indifferent. Seneca writes, vices surround and assail men from every side, and do not allow them to rise again and lift their eyes to discern the truth, but keep them overwhelmed and rooted in their desires. If by chance they achieve some tranquility, just as a swell remains on the deep sea even after the wind has dropped, so they go on tossing about and never find rest from their desires. So, um, the reason I highlighted some of the, the words in this book, I was reading through this recently. I thought it would be um, valuable to go, well, one, read that briefly, and then go over in a bit more detail um, about what Seneca means and how it can help us in our day-to-day -day lives. So, um, the first and most obvious thing really is Seneca writes, vices surround and assail men from every side. So this was written all the way back in ancient Rome. And um, I imagine back then they had desires and, and vices um, all around them as we do today. I think today we probably have more um, sources of, of vice and desire um, simply because everything's a lot more accessible these days. The variety of these things is a lot greater and there's also new things like social media, um, YouTube, video games and things like that. So I think really what he's writing about here is as relevant today as it was back then. He moves on to say, these things, these vices and desires do not allow us to rise again and lift our eyes to discern the truth, but keep us overwhelmed and rooted in our desires. And here I really think this is probably the most um, valuable sentence in, in this passage, to me at least, because I think to me what he's saying here is when we find ourselves in a position where we feel the hooks of food, alcohol, social media, and whatever it might be, it's very difficult to treat these things clearly and honestly with ourselves. We are, in general, far more likely to validate our behavior than admit that there's something wrong. When we see these things in others, um, we're far more likely to be able to see that there's a problem, point it out, and even offer advice if they're friends and family. But with ourselves, we're not as good at doing things like that. So I think this is what Seneca's saying here. So it's a nice reminder that when we do feel the pull of desire, um, we really do have to make an effort to be honest with ourselves. Because at the end of the day, if we're not honest and we're pulling the wool over our own eyes, we're going to be less able to improve our situation because we're not addressing it in the way it should be addressed. Also, as a side note, I think this is why things like journaling and meditation are so valuable. And these things were popular with the Stoics and they're popular today because they really do give us an opportunity to reflect on our own kind of thoughts and behaviors um, and emotions. And when we reflect on these things and we can see them more clearly, it's easier for us to, to be honest with ourselves. And if we're honest with ourselves and we're honest about the situation, then we're far better able to kind of get ourselves out of them, if that makes sense. Seneca moves on to say, never can they recover their true selves. And in many cases, I think this is correct. But I think as an absolute term, this isn't always right. I think if we catch ourselves before we're too deep into vice and too deep into desire, and generally, I think if we do get too deep, it, it can also be called addiction. If we're no longer able to moderate our own behaviors because of the pull of these things, I think that could arguably be called addiction. So I think if we can catch ourselves early enough, we can recover our true selves. But I do agree with 
Seneca, and I think, again, is something to keep in mind if we do find ourselves too deep into desire or we know that there's a path that will take us there, it's better to stop before we lose um, who we are permanently um, because some things will have their hooks in us for a long time even after we, we stop them. So he then moves on to say, if by chance they achieve some tranquility, just as a swell remains on the deep sea even after the wind has dropped, so they go on tossing about and never find rest from their desires. I think this is this last bit is an extension of never can they recover their true selves. I think people that have gone too deep into desire may um, find every now and then they have some tranquility. They might forget about what it is that they are pulled towards but but generally this tranquility isn't resilient because we'll still feel the hooks of those things um, in us and pulling us towards um, whatever it might be so a reasonably short passage from the shortness of life but i think it's worth i think it was worth discussing briefly on the channel and it's something a little different i think going through the classics and highlighting some passages and discussing them with you guys is a nice way to go over some of the um some of the more well-known stoicism, but also some of the, the stuff that... I know not everybody reads um, the classics. A lot of people either don't have the time or they're not that into stoicism to, to go into the source material. But I think it's useful to go back to exactly what people like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus said and um, have a discussion about some of their original writings. If you like this kind of content, um, please let me know in the comments and we can do more. I think it's worth every now and then going back into the source material and um, going over some of the stuff that's often not quoted but has a lot of value. Um, so that is everything for today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.